sampling sometimes uh, makes people's eyes glaze over. <laughs> but I hope that by the end of today's session, you'll be very, very excited about zoning. It's a, it's a mysterious and complex process to many people. And even though it has a substantial effect on local food environments and on access to healthy, affordable food, the connections between zoning, food, and health aren't often addressed by planners and public health professionals uh, or community advocates, for that matter. Uh, but I hope that by the end of today's discussion, you'll see how spatial planning shapes local food environments and therefore how critical it is for us to consider food and health as we make decisions about how to change a neighborhood's land use. And these decisions, as you know, are going on. Uh, they have been going on forever in New York City, but they are, are going on um, in, in this administration uh, in, in different neighborhoods across the city. And I want to just illustrate the connection between zoning and food with just three brief examples from East Harlem, uh, a neighborhood that the Food Policy Center has been working in extensively with community advocates to improve East Harlem's uh, food environment and particularly food access in East Harlem. So the first uh, image is East River Plaza, which some of you may know, some of you may have uh, shopped in Costco. Um, this example illustrates the power of zoning to shape the specific type of food retail located in the community. East River Plaza is located between 116th and 119th streets on the East River and used to be where the uh, defunct Washburn Wire Factory was. And in rezoning the site for commercial development, planners and the developer specified the configuration of the site that was considered most appropriate. And that configuration was space for big box retail. And so Costco is the, the, the flagship retailer located there. It also has Target and now Aldi Supermarket. And so this is an example of how zoning can really create access to a specific type of food retail in the community. The second example is um, Pathmark, and it illustrates how zoning creates development pressures that alter the broader development environment and therefore the food environment. So Pathmark, for those of you um, who may not know, is located on 125th Street between Lexington and 3rd, and it just closed because the property that it's located on was sold to the Extel Development Company last year for $39 million. And that was 15 years after grassroots advocates in East Harlem uh, lobbied the city extensively uh, f uh, to, to bring a Pathmark supermarket to the neighborhood and got the city to sell the property that it owned to the Abyssinian Development Corporation for $1.5 million with the stipulation that Pathmark operate there for a decade. <coughs> And it did. And, uh, but by rezoning the 125th Street corridor, and um, also by uh, rezoning land just northeast of Southmark for uh, a very big development called the East Harlem Media, Entertainment, and Cultural Center, a complex of offices, apartments, hotel, and entertainment facilities, that changed the economics of the Pathmark site and made that parcel much, much more lucrative, and um, that parcel can fit a much larger building with development uh, bonuses. And whether you agree or disagree with the urban design decision that this type of development is more appropriate for 125th Street than a single story supermarket, um, we need to know that the uh, decisions made in, 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 in um, rezoning the land uh, affected the development potential of this site and therefore changed uh, the decision of Abyssinian Development Corporation to keep Pathmark there to selling the site for $39 million. Um, a third example shows how zoning can be used proactively to encourage supermarket development. And this is a photograph on 120th Street and 3rd Avenue, just catty corner from the Hunter School of Public Health building. Um, and it's a site that will include residential um, uh, apartments and also a fresh supermarket, and fresh stands for food retail expansion to support health. It's a zoning incentive that the city planning department developed several years ago to encourage uh, residential building uh, developers to uh, put a supermarket on the ground floor, a supermarket that has to sell a certain quantity of healthy fresh produce uh, in exchange for some uh, bonus floor area so that the developer can reap additional economic benefits in exchange for uh, leaving the ground floor for a supermarket. So uh, I don't want to keep um, 
our panelists from, from, from speaking. So I want to turn the, the, the discussion over to them and I'll introduce them briefly uh, to explore these issues of how zoning and uh, uh, planning affect the local food environment. And our first speaker is Javier Lopez, who is the deputy director of the New York City um, Department of Health and Mental Hygiene Center for Health Equity, uh, where he's responsible for developing the center's policy and neighborhood planning agenda including a health equity in all planning framework to address persistent health inequities. Uh, before joining the Center for Health Equity, Javier was Congressman Jose Serrano's uh, District Chief of Staff, and he was the director of the Strategic Alliance for Health, a citywide initiative to advance policies on physical activity, nutrition, and tobacco use within schools and local communities. Javier holds a Master's of Public, health, uh, pu public Administration from Baruch's College um, a School of Public Affairs, where he was also named a National Urban Fellow. And following Javier, Daniel Hernandez will speak. He's the Deputy Commissioner for Neighborhood Strategies at the Department of Housing, Preservation, and Development, where he's leading the planning and housing strategies outlined in the Mayor's Landmark Housing New York uh, Plan, which passed uh, in May 2015, and which commits the city to develop or um, uh, preserve 200,000 units of affordable housing in this, uh, 20,000 units of affordable housing in the city. Um, Daniel has been uh, a real estate planner, developer, advisor, and project manager with his own firm, Topology, with the Jonathan Rose Companies and the nonprofit Mission Housing Development Corporation. He also teaches at Pratt Institute and he's been involved in uh, too many national and international sustainable development initiatives to, to detail here. And uh, Daniel will be followed by Shai Loros, uh, who oversees the development and management of affordable housing, community facilities, and commercial and manufacturing space for the Cypress Hills Local Development Corporation, as well as Cypress Hills Verde, a neighborhood-wide sustainability initiative advancing food access, urban agriculture, and energy efficiency throughout the Cypress Hills and East New York neighborhoods. And before joining Cypress Hills, she was the executive director of Green Home New York City, a nonprofit helping small business uh, building owners adapt uh, and adopt sustainable building materials and practices. She has a BA from Barnard, a master's in architecture from Columbia, and a master's in regional and urban planning from the London, London School of Economics, and has taught site planning and geography at Temple University, and more significantly at CUNY's own College of Technology. So <laughs> I want to welcome the panelists um, and uh, invite Javier to 